So, well, it is episode 467. 467. Which is season eight, I just learned recently. Yes, it's season eight. I'm in my eighth year, so I made it season eight. And today's topic, and by the way, before I get into my topic, uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here and thanks for listening. If you like what you hear, please share it with your friends, share it with family members, and please subscribe and you will be alerted every week. By the way, go to my website, uh, busylivingsober.com with a B-U-S-Y, livingsober.com and sign up for my newsletter and then you get my newsletter on Fridays. So enough of that. So we're going to have a different thing than we've ever done. I said to JF this week, I said, why don't you come on the podcast? And we will see how this goes. And why do you ask me questions? Okay. Because I always ask questions. So you guys have to bear with him. He's not, he doesn't have a communication degree. This is not his forte. So this is kind of the hot seat for him. I'm kind of putting him in a place he's never been before. So we're going to go from there. So here you go. What's right. your first question? Well, let's get started. So <clears throat> you have a, uh, a sobriety anniversary coming up in about 10 days. And... Uh, <clears throat> So you've been at this for a while um, and things have, of course, grown and changed and uh, you've grown and changed. And as you've said many times, your name is busy, uh, which uh, and, and also you're a very busy person. So tell us, please, what's new and what's going on and uh, what what changes do you see yourself making and what direction are you heading, heading in now? Good questions. Hi, everybody. Oh, my gosh. So thanks for the question. Um, I have to say this. So where I am today, where I was yesterday. So it's like 10 days shy of my 18 years. It's kind of funny. 18 years. I think about it all the time. Like what 18 years look like. What my life looked like 18 years ago. It's really... Um, it's kind of crazy because 18 years ago, obviously I had small children. I was living in Philadelphia. I was, I gone, I'd gone through a really bad divorce and I had bought, I rented a home for a couple of years and that was crazy wild times. I drank with like, I just would have girls over and drink a lot and I traveled a lot and just did crazy things. And then I bought a home and the kind of funny thing is I think back to 18 years ago and I like the most important thing was like when I bought this house, it was like, all right, it had to be in a certain school district. It had to be in a certain school in that school district. And then it was bonus that I could walk to a bar and I could walk to this town. And it was really, um, that was like the most important thing. And I fast forward to now 18 years later and like, like being in a, like being at an establishment, that's like not what I ever think of anymore. Like, oh, I've got to be close to this thing. Or I got to be close to that thing. The only thing that I want to be close to is the ocean and a little town where I can go shopping and where there's, you know, and I can go major shopping, shopping right down the street, which is also important to me because I love to shop. But, um, you know, where I am today compared to where I was then was is in a lot different place. And it's really interesting because right now I've been really challenged with, um, you know, I've been challenged because I've had some guests, guests, I've had some actual people reach out to me for help and they're older than me. One of them's older than me and one of them's my age. And so they're in their 50s, 60s. And, you know, it's an, it's a totally different, you know, it's a different bag of wax now or whatever that saying is. It's like life has really changed a lot. And I know that today, I don't know if back 18 years ago, there was a lot of mental illness or if we covered it up more or with social media and the press and everything else we're more aware of the mental health issues but there's a lot of them right now and it's really scary because when I got sober and I asked my sponsor back then who you know I asked pretty much my first meeting if she'd be my sponsor I was willing to go to any lengths. I was like, stand on my head. Okay, I'd stand on my head. And when I, she said, you're going to have to go to 90 meetings in 90 days. And I was like, I'm busy. And she was like, I don't care if you want what I have. You'll go to these meetings. And I was like, I'm willing to do that. And it's, people aren't willing to do anything anymore. They want a quick fix. That's something I find very interesting. Mm. Do you, I wonder, I, this was 
as, as I was listening to you talk, um, you know, I just wonder if maybe part of the fact is, so you got sober, you were in your mid thirties. Um, and, uh, there was probably a lot of people that were around the same age that were coming in around the same time. At least that was my experience anyway. And, uh, you know, so now you're trying to deal with some people that have been drinking for like 20 years more than that. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, what's what's the old saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks right and uh I, you know i mean is that part of the problem do you think i think i mean i didn't even think about that i mean i think maybe you're right i mean really thinking about the fact that when you do get to this place that you're like i've been doing my life for 50 years 60 years over 60 years and you're gonna come in and you're gonna tell me what to do well i'm not that desperate i'm not that desperate no, I, i've I, been doing i've been doing this and my life is okay. You know, I still got money in my bank account because of family and I don't need to worry about the money thing because I've got enough money and what people want me to do to change. It's not really, where's the skin? I'm not going to like go live on the streets. That hasn't happened to me. Well, I don't have that many friends, but that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. how those people are and it's lonely. I can imagine. Yeah, I'm sure. Hating yourself is the worst feeling to have, though. I know that. I know that hating yourself and not being proud of who you are is something that's really, it's a really yucky place to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just see that's the older people get, the harder it is for them to be able to change anything at all. You know, you just get, people get set in their ways. And uh, and I get it. And, and I think also, you know, as I was also thinking about it, is that, um, it, and people that are, uh, viewing us that are, you know, part of the recovery community can, can probably really relate is that you, when you show up someplace, um, you show up with a splash and you're very interesting and exciting. And I have a feeling that people are like, wow, like, look at her. Like, you know, that's what I want to be like. Maybe she can help me. And, uh, you know, and like a lot of addicts, you know, you, you, you sleep on it and you're like, maybe I was a little bit hasty. Maybe I don't want to be quite like her, you know, maybe I really, that's not, maybe I just need to slow down a little bit, you know, I don't need to stop. Oh my gosh, that sounds terrible, you know, and that could be part of it too, I think. Well, I think it's the controlling thing. I think that it's like, if you have been the master of your whole life and you have been in control for a lot of, of your life, especially if you've gotten to your mid 60s. You know, you've been in control of your life making decisions for a really long time. So the thought of having a stranger that's going to be like, yeah, you're going to do this, this, and this. You're like, mm, no, I don't think so. Mm, I don't think so. I've been doing it for this many years. I don't need your help. And I think that it takes this word humility that, that we get that bounces around a lot. And I think it takes a lot of humility to be able to say, I'm willing to go to any lengths. You know, I'm I, I'm willing to do whatever it takes so that I get the outcome that I would like to have because I know, and it's so interesting because most of these people have tried to get sober previously. So this is not their first rodeo and their lives had definitely gotten worse, right? It hasn't gotten any better. It's like their lives just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And they say, you know, either jails or institutions or death is where your life gets to and it's just interesting to not want to be in a place where you're like, you know what? I want to get better and I'm willing to do it. I don't care what it takes, but it's just the way that they are. And as depressing as it is, I've learned a lot over these past 18 years. To, I'm finally at this place where well, I'll tell you this. I loved drama. I always have loved drama, right? I grew up in a house with a ton of it. I mean, I've, I, I'm the oldest five kids. So there was always something going on in the house. And um, so drama was always a big part of my life. And I love the drama that these people have in their lives. And it's kind of, I don't want to say fun because it's kind of sick, but it's very, you know, knowing that you're helping somebody and you're in the middle of this whole thing and you're busy and you've got phone calls and you're da 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 But today I, I don't feel that anymore. I was, I, I, I'm like, I can't do this. I gotta, I gotta back off. If I feel some that somebody doesn't really want this, I'm definitely not going to shove it down their throats. I mean, I'm busy living sober. I that's I named it that's, this because you know I named it this. Yeah, that's right. I was thinking you're not busy living relapsing. No, I no. you know, and I'm busy, and I I take you know my recovery part of my life is really um, 
it's stable for right now. And I feel very grateful for that. I'm, you know, I'm at, at this place of like stability and that's why I've pivoted to more of the political stuff. And I've had, you know, I, I get a lot of people writing to me that obviously are on different sides of the aisle than I am. And I can respect that. Um, I don't want to banter back and forth with you and try and convince you one way or the other, because I think that most people that comment have an ability to read and find out their own information and you get to do you boo boo and I get to do me. And, um, I celebrate the fact that I am proud. I am proud, um, to be a conservative. I'm proud to be a Trumper. And, you know, I don't know which came first again. I got sober. I, I went out in the world and I said, you know, I'm sober, not ashamed. Then I became busy living sober and, you know, and now I'm busy living a political life, which is kind of fun. I'm not living a political life. I'm just into politics, which I've always been my entire life. But again, that shame of being, of owning who you are was something that I felt for a long time. And now I don't feel so much that way. And now I'm like at this place of like, this is who I am. If you don't like it, it's okay. It's just like asking me for help. Like, this is what I know worked for me to get sober. And if you don't want to do that, see ya. Bye. Like, I can't like waste my time. I don't have that much. I mean, I'm in the back nine of life. We all know that I'm like 55 plus. And so I want to be able to be there for my family. And if I'm going to give somebody my time, I want them to be serious about getting sober. I just have one more question on that topic, and then we'll move on to the next thing. So um, you said that these people have tried to get sober many times in the past. And uh, and so my question is, how many times did you try to get sober before you got sober? Never. Okay. Me, me either. <laughs> never. Me either. I never had tried before I did it. I just, I, you know, I was a party girl. I mean, I wish that I didn't have to have a hangover. Why is this hangover so bad? I, I remember praying for that. And I remember praying for an ability to be like, oh my God, why do I have to have one? And then I end up with 47. I hated that. And I hated waking up with the resentment I had in my heart. But I never really tried until, you know, August 14, 2006. Never tried before. Had that feeling. So, um, you have in the last six months or so, you've been to uh, Medjugorje and back. Uh, you've been to a few different churches. You've been uh, involved in a lot of different things. So, uh, my question to you, I think right now, is um, you've done a lot of exploring. So, tell us about where you've got to. And I'm kind of curious about where you've got to in the context of core values. My core values really have never changed. I think my core values have been always the same. It's just really what the hard part has been is finding what building I feel the most comfortable in. And after moving to Florida, we've I've had a really hard time because you're so good. You just go wherever I say, let's go here. And you're like, sure, let's go there. And you're like, okay. So um, I went to Benjagoria though by myself and um which is in um it's Medjugorje is in Bosnia Herzegovina and it's by Croatia it's about two hours from split Croatia and um it's up near the mountains and um where I am today with my core values is they really haven't changed whatsoever I am really all about you know, I'm God, family, and and country, and that's just where I am. And what's most important to me, and what I've come to believe the most. One thing about my sobriety is that I know that I wouldn't be sober without God. Like falling to my knees 18 years ago and saying, "I'm done. God, please help me," and He did. And the cravings went away right then. And thank God they haven't come back. That was me getting on my knees and surrendering and saying I was done. And then that continued to work with different sponsors along the way. I mean, my sponsor I've now, I absolutely adore too. I've adored all of them. They've all been so beneficial at different times in my life. And, um, but my core values and what I believe is right and wrong have not changed. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit? Can you give me a little bit more of what you're looking for? Okay. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about spirituality and and religion and where do you stand in that a lot of people we seem to meet a lot of people say well i'm not religious i'm spiritual and uh, i'm not sure what that means it seems like just a way to to sort of sidestep the entire issue so 
Uh, are you spiritual? Are you religious? Are you both? Do you see a distinction? Well, it's really interesting. So I was born in 1968. So everybody in 1968 was going to church or you were going to a synagogue. You were going to wherever you went. You were either Catholic, you were Episcopalian, you were Protestant, you were Jewish, you were, that's most of the people that I knew, and Methodist or whatever. And you went to church. That's what you did on Sundays. And everybody had a relationship with God. And Sundays were literally family day because nothing was open. You There were no, nobody was going to restaurants all the time on the weekends. There were no, nothing was really, nothing was open on Sundays, nothing. And again, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri that we had, there were no malls open. I don't think the grocery stores were open. I think that you had to do everything on Saturday, Sundays, nothing. Was that for you too? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that was, in, he, and he grew up in Pennsylvania. So I was kind of like, like, some people say St. Louis is the South. It is a little lower. So, and Pennsylvania is obviously in the North. So it back then, your religious affiliation was really important to you and having God. So my religion always growing up, I went to Catholic church my entire childhood until I was about oh, 30. I think I was 30 when I stopped going to Catholic 30, 31, 32, you know, it was like 2000, 2001, 2002 is when I stopped going. So anyway, and then I got sober in 2006 so when I got sober in 2006, I, you know, I went into the program and the program of Alcoholics Anonymous has got a lot of stuff dealing with um, God. Talk about God all the time. One of the steps, a lot of steps mention God. And so for me, I had this whole thing like, oh my gosh, I, this is so great because I know this. Now we're into stuff I'm really into, which is God. And a lot of people there said, well, I'm spiritual. And that was my first in thing I'd ever heard about spirituality. I mean, I guess I had heard some people. And again, this was in 2006, not 2024, where everybody's going, mm, and there's more spiritual stuff than ever. You know, more people do yoga, more people do all different alternative ways of, you know, praying and finding different whatever practices to find peace and serenity. But for me, it had always been God. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual thing that people were like, well, I find spirituality outside in the nature and all that. And I think spirituality is like, I think it's a place where you go when you really don't want to commit to a religion and you want to go, I'm just going to be spiritual. I don't need to go into a church and I don't need to pray and I don't need to believe in one thing or another thing. I'm just going to believe in something. I don't want to identify what that is. It doesn't have to be in a building. I don't have to find a bunch of people that believe the same exact thing. I don't find community in my spirituality. I guess you could if you went to a certain yoga studio or whatever, but that's what spirituality is to me. So do you find there's morality in spirituality? That's a big question of mine. I think that there's, I, I think in spirituality, there's more, and I hate to say the word fluff, but I'm going to say that the morality kind of changes. I don't, I think that there isn't such strong beliefs there are there isn't st strong fundamentals right like it's not like i know for me when i because I, I am christian and i always and i've been christian catholic and episcopalian for i've been episcopalian for about since 2002 probably so that's 22 years and so i've always had a belief in god and i'm and i go to a high episcopal church so it's kind of at the top so it's very similar to catholicism and the church i even attend has mary all over the place so it makes me feel good but um where i know right from wrong i mean i was taught when i was younger because i went to sunday school and everything i was taught these 10 commandments and i was taught what's right and what's wrong i mean i was given a bible at a very young age I, you know, one of your first sacraments is getting baptized, which of course I had no opinion on whether or not that happened because I was a baby. And then, then I, you know, made my first Holy Communion, I got confirmed, then I got married. And so I think that there's definitely in religion, there's more dotting of I's, crossing of T's. There's a way that you're supposed to live if you have, if you belong to a church where in spirituality, you kind of be, can be whatever you want to be. And I think that's led us to a society that's all about money and material stuff and dark stuff that never will make you happy. 
then with God, which is like filling your soul. And, you know, when I did get sober and just to, you know, finish this right here, it's like, they used to say to me, you have a God shaped hole inside of you. And I'd be like, what does that mean? And, and, you know, I was living in a, a, my, when I was drinking, it was really dark. It was really dark. And I compare it all the time to a stained glass window in an old church filled with soot and um so when you get sober all this goes away and you get to be your beautiful self again i love that analogy that you make it's a, it's yeah. a, really, it's a really great one thank you you're thanks. welcome thanks so um and you've branched out from where you've been of just busy living sober um and you talk a lot more about spirituality uh, a lot in your podcast i hear that a lot and now you've gotten into uh uh, a little bit of commentary about uh, politics. So tell us what led you in that direction, and uh, what do you hope to uh, what do you hope to get from that? I don't know how much I want to get as much as how much I want to help educate others. I think that again, if you're over the age of, I don't know, thirty, maybe even thirty five. I don't know what year Tom Brokaw retired. I have no idea. I could probably ask somebody right now and she mm -hmm. would say it in this machine, but I'm not going to. But anyway, when I was growing up, you could turn on ABC, NBC. Obviously, there was not cable like there is today. There was like maybe five channels. Let's be honest. Maybe I think that was it, five channels. And you would turn on the news with your family and there would be real live news it would not be this is my opinion and this is my opinion and we lean left we lean right it was more like they were journalists that took their oath really seriously that they weren't going to be biased they weren't going to show you what they believed their job was to get out there and tell you facts and i found that so that's how i grew up i grew up watching the facts with tom broke up i watched nbc nightly news it was where i found everything and fast forward to where we are today, and I feel like the truth isn't being told to us. I feel like, and one of, one of the biggest examples for that for me was, because I went through this personally, was January 6th. You know, I'm watching TV and all this stuff's going on about January 6th. Oh my gosh, they're going into the White House and it, I mean, going into the Capitol and they're doing all these terrible things in the Capitol and there's these horrible people and da 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 And, um, my son was there, mm -hmm. my oldest son. And my oldest son was in the Capitol working. And I'm now I'm frantically calling him and he picks up the phone. He's like, what, mom? I'm like, what's going on? Are you okay? Da, da, da. He's like, it's a joke. They're letting people in. This is just like the biggest joke ever. And the media made it out to be something totally different. So I'm like, nobody here is telling the truth. And that was when I went, wait a minute. I'm like, finally, it's like stuff keeps going. And I, of course, tend to listen to more conservative, God-fearing people when it comes to what I listen to and what I spent my time listening to and give my energy to. They're all believers in a form of God. And they, uh, and that's very important to me because I think that if you don't have a God, and God, again, has become money and wanting to take over this whole place. It's just, it's sickening. And so I, I'm not into that at all. So I finally decided after what's been going on that I'm like, I got to get, I got to speak up. Like I'm sitting here in my house and I've got this platform and it, maybe no one will listen, but I've got to be courageous enough to say, are you guys out there watching what's really going on? Because what they're telling you is not true. You know, it's not NBC that it was when we were growing up. It's not ABC that it was growing up. It's not CBS the way it was with Dan Rather when we were growing up. These are not journalists. These are people telling you what they're told to say. And it's kind of interesting because I feel like Kamala Harris is a lot like this too. Like she's just doing what somebody else is telling her to do. Yes, she obviously has the goal that she wants to be the first woman president. Like that will fill her ego and then she's going to be good in her life. But what does she truly believe in? Um, I think that if you really were to ask her what she truly believes in, um, it would, she'd have a hard time doing that because she doesn't tell the truth. And um, she's been bought by somebody. And that's how I feel like most people have been in today's world. So 
it's kind of interesting being like a recovery coach and someone that is wants to help others also it's like i don't i don't mix money and my helping of others at all and that again puts me in a precarious position because people are like well will you help me and i'm like i will help you and like well can i pay you and i'm like no there's no money to be paid but you will have to do certain things mm -hmm. and they don't want to do that they want to pay you and be able to control you and i'm not I, I can't be bought, I guess, is the reality. I gotcha. So truth is something that you mentioned about hmm, eight or nine times. Um, and uh, it's obviously an important part of uh, recovery. Um, honesty and truth are pretty much the same thing. And uh, so I see that as uh, sort of a core principle of you. Would you agree with that? 110%. And, you know, in how it works, which is something, you know, I read for over a decade. And um, in the very beginning, I think it says before you even get to the steps, I think it says honesty is, uh, I think, three or four or five times in the mm -hmm. first, like three paragraphs, it says honesty. And um, it says in there, like, you have to be honest. And for me, that's like the only place I can come from. And I mentioned this in a podcast last week you know, is that like my honesty is my only truth I have. And so being honest and my feelings might be different than yours. And these are my feelings. These are my opinions. And this is what's important to me. So if you don't believe it, that's okay. But this is my belief. So my honest truth might be different than your honest truth. But being honest is like so important to me. And even when I was little, I remember when somebody would tell a lie that I knew was a lie, it would make me so angry. I'd be like, oh my gosh, they're lying, they're lying, they're lying. And I would go and tell my mom, they're lying, they're lying, they're lying. And she'd be like, Elizabeth, it's okay, it's okay. But I always have been someone that's just like, always, even when I was drinking, I mean, the bad part about drinking and being able to, and wanting to tell the truth is that some things come out of your mouth without a filter. Mm. Um, which was a problem. And the older I get, the more I'm trying to filter. But I'm not always the best at that still at this age. But um, being telling the truth is like so big for me. It's like you have to tell the truth. If you don't tell me the truth, I mean, it's kind of funny. And I just thought about this. So when I met JF, I remember saying to him, I don't like to play games. Now, especially with relationships with humans. So if you want to get into a relationship with me, I need to know the, all the facts. I need to see my cards and then I can make a decision. So when you're playing blackjack and somebody deals the cards to you and they send, and you've got a 10 and a five, you have to take a chance, right? Like, am I going to say hit me or am I going to say I'm done? I'm going to stop. That's where you get to make a choice. But in relationships, if you sit here and you don't show me the exact cards that I have to make a choice from, that's not really how I want to live my life. I want to live my life with somebody who's going to be like, here are your cards. You make the decision. And when somebody doesn't do that, I feel like I have been, you might as well have shot me with a gun or something. I just feel terrible. I feel yucky on the inside. I feel like oh my gosh, I've been totally taken advantage of because I, 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 I preface things with, tell me the truth. I can handle it. Let me make a choice from there. Gotcha. So do you feel, um, <clears throat> it's sort of a mission of yours to get the truth out based on the fact that, uh, people don't know it or they do know it, that they're not able to get the truth. I think that it's like, I don't know if it's my mission at this point. I'm trying to re I am working on my mission statement again, because I am at a different, again, eight years into this and you change, right? There's things that change. I change the world changes. What's important. What isn't important changes. So where I am right now is that, um, wait, what was the question? I just lost it. Oh my God. Well, we were talking about the fact that it's very difficult for people to get the truth. Well, oh, so I think that it's not, I think that, again, this is my opinion, my, uh, from what I watch, these are my, so I share from what I watch, my opinions on things. Mm -hmm. When I see things that go on that aren't truthful, I'm going to tell you. Now you get to take that any way you want it. Like you can take it as I'm the truth or you can take it like I'm a liar. That's up to you. 
But I can tell you that I do a lot of research. I listen to a lot of podcasts, only political. And um, because I do believe that this election coming up is really going to be a precipice of what's going to happen in the future. And I think we are really in dark times. And I do believe that God in the end is going to prevail. But I think we are in really dark times. And either we're going to get on the bandwagon that, oh, my God, I don't want to go. If this is the world we're going to, that looks like the way we've been living for the past four years with everybody lying to us. We don't know who's been the president. Kamala Harris is going to be the same exact way. She's never really been up for election before. She's slept her way to wherever she's getting. She's never governed anything. Um, when she had, she put people in jail for the death penalty for marijuana in California is trying to say that she never did that. She was the, um, she was the czar of the border. I mean, I've seen where it came out in 2021 that she was the, uh, the border czar, never went to the border. So everything that I've seen of her is like, oh my gosh, she's taking us down this place that's full of more lies, more of, there's no authenticity, there's no transparency, it's all smoke and mirrors. And um, I don't want any more of that. I want somebody to tell me what's going on. And yet, is Donald Trump perfect? I don't think anybody's perfect, except for Jesus Christ, who isn't on this planet right now, I don't think, maybe he is, but um, that's the only person I think is perfect. So to sit here and think that at least with him, he gets out there, he tells you what he's thinking, and um, he has the same beliefs that I do at the end of the day. And I believe that those core values that I mentioned earlier are going to, if President Trump is elected again, I will have more of that again. Mm -hmm. Instead of this, like, oh, it doesn't matter who you are, coming out on Easter Sunday and making that transgender Sunday, which was a total F you to Christians out there in the world. At least I felt that personally. Um, you know, that's the day that Christ rose and um and to to heaven. And instead it's transgender day. And that to me is a total bullshit. I mean, it's just it's. I'm sorry if I just said that word and it offended you, but it's total bullshit. And so I don't want any more of that. I don't want any more of what's been going on. Um, I don't like talking to friends that are totally, totally strapped for money and they have a hard time paying their bills. And I can't stand that. And I can't stand how expensive it is. Every time I go to the gas station to fill one of my cars is over $100. It's like insane. It's ludicrous. Like what is going on? And then prices for food. Oh my God, eggs. I paid $7 for eggs. Did I get organic? Yes, because that's important to me because I'm really, I mean, it's only JF and I now eating. And so I do get, and they last about two weeks anyway. But $7 for eggs is just a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And I feel like we're living in such darkness. I think that there is no more God. I, I feel like it's an interesting because I've had people write to me that, um, that just say, I'll say, God bless you. And they're like, I don't believe in God. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how can you be on this planet and not believe in God? It's kind of scary. It's kind of scary in this world. Like if you have no hope, where do you get your hope from? If you've not, I mean, what, on your own sexual pleasures or your own decision to make your own decisions to satisfy yourself? It's life all about just taking care of you, me, 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 the selfish, self-centered society we live in today? I don't think so. What about helping your neighbors? So you've been a helper for as long as I've known you, and you've helped a lot of people, and it seems like you've, you've, your mission has really kind of moved to trying to help out in the biggest way you possibly can are you are you do you consider yourself like shining trying to shine a light on a lot of the stuff because it feels like it to me well it's interesting i had this now that you brought that up i had a sponsor a friend i'm gonna say a fellow traveler and um i'm not gonna name her name but um she's been a listener i don't know if she listens anymore but she used to listen um all the time and she talked about a lot of times she would be like i feel like you're my flashlight because you're showing me what life could be in the future and, and and with being, you know, sober and that sort of thing. And now I feel like because sobriety is still important to me and it is, it's important to my life. It's the sober, not ashamed piece isn't, I'm not ashamed, ashamed anymore at all. I, you know, 18 years later, obviously that has disintegrated and, the ability to show people like how I'm walking a sober life is not as imperative in some ways. I mean, I, 
some people think it is, but I, I don't know. I, I It will be kind of fun to have you listeners write to me if you have a, a thought one way or the other. But I do feel like this ability to talk about what's going on in the world is uh, very satisfying. It's very satisfying in that when I watch TV and when I hear certain things, it's like, I want everybody to know. Like, I want more people to know than not. So I'm like, if this is going to be a platform that, again, I have the courage to go out here and tell you guys the way I feel and knowing that I get hate mail and hate responses and that sort of thing, which is luckily for me, I've got thick skin and I don't really care. Um, I I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you believe something different than I do. I, um, I'm going to be out there for a long time and especially for the next, you know, how many months it is, let's see, we're in August, September, October, November, I, you know, four months actually, it's November 5th is it's tomorrow is exactly four months to the day that we will vote. And so I, I, I am, uh, I'm, I'm passionate about this and I love it and I love what I believe. And I believe in God country family, whichever those two can get the both there, you know, I don't know which comes first and the, the, but it's God's always first. And I trust God, but I also trust that, a lot of people haven't been raised with any form of religion today and they haven't had, they don't have any core set of values. And I think that's what gets us into this trouble because we all need to have a core base where we feel safe. And that's behind a God or something that's bigger than you that you can't see or touch because any human being in your life is fallible and will let you down. It's just reality because they're humans and humans are sinners. And that's just the truth. Got it. Well, um, I have one more question and I'm going to take you in a different direction and then I think I'm done. Good. And, and so this is actually about somewhat current events, but uh, I'm, I'm interested on your take that uh, um, there doesn't seem to be much talk out there at all about the fact that uh, the former president of the United States was shot three or four weeks ago. I don't really hear it discussed then very often i don't even he doesn't even have much to say about it and uh i'm curious what your opinion is about that well thanks for this by the way and thanks for listening again everybody so i was watching on um i think it was july tw- what, what day was it did that happen i can't remember the date of it i, I could google it but i probably couldn't find it on google um but i can tell you this that day We had driven to West Palm Beach on Southern Boulevard. So we went west on Southern Boulevard, which goes by PBI Airport, Palm Beach International Airport, which is where Donald Trump keeps his plane. So especially when he's down here at his house in Florida in Palm Beach at Mar-a-Lago. So we're driving to um, we're driving to wherever we were driving and we drive past the airport and there's his plane. And it was a Saturday and I'm like, oh, my God, why is this plane? isn't he on of Disney doing a rally? And we both said, well, yeah, there, there's, oh my gosh, there's, you know, maybe he took the day off is what we thought. We thought maybe he took the day off. And he, um, and there were all these people out with like signs that were like, go Trump, go Trump. And, you know, at that point, Joe Biden hadn't dropped out of the election. So there, there was, you know, let's go Brandon signs and that sort of thing. So anyway, needless to say, I went by the airport and there were police at every different exit, which I thought was kind of interesting. But anyway, so we get to where we're going, we come back, this plane's still there. It's around 1 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. And we get home and a friend of mine who always tells me when to watch is like, turn on the Trump. It's he's coming on right now on Butler PA. So I turn on the TV. I couldn't really find it in the beginning. I ended up having to get it on Newsmax. Was it Newsmax? Yeah. Or one of the, or the right, no, it was the right side. So it was the right side because I have um, the television state. They don't let you have Newsmax on my TV because I have AT&T. So I put it on, we're watching it. And I had this feeling come over me. That he was going to be shot. Didn't I tell you that? I was like, I was like, he's going to get shot. I don't know why I had that feeling, but I knew he was going to be shot. So he gets shot and I start hysterically crying because they, he goes down and the whole thing that I think is, I feel like everybody wants us not to pay attention to these large things that are going, have happened. We've had so many things happen recently. 
I mean, starting with Trump being shot, Biden stepping down, Kamala Harris stepping up. Who is Kamala Harris? We haven't really seen her the entire time she's been a vice president besides laughing like a freaking hyena. And I don't understand what she believes in, what she doesn't believe in. She's just some, I mean, I swear to God, she's a puppet. And here we are. And all these things kept getting revealed. I mentioned it in my um, last week's podcast. I was like, you know what? I feel like we're living in the Wizard of Oz and Toto keeps pulling back the screen. And there he is, the Wizard of Oz. The scary Wizard of Oz is just this old dude in front of a computer. Like, what is going on? So I think that what happened was tragic. Who did it? Why he did it? I can tell you this. And I hate to bring up like school shootings. If there's a school shooting, we hear about it uh, ad nauseum. The kids brought up, the kids' families brought up, the kids that were in the school are like interviewed. All this crazy stuff goes on, right? And the president of the United States, the former president of the United States is shot in the ear and no one talks about it again. Interesting, isn't it? We live in really dark times. So as you mentioned, being a flashlight, if I can be the light in somebody's uh, life and help them to see more and help educate people to a little bit more of what's going on out there. And again, I always think everybody's got to go look at their stuff themselves as well. But taking the time, I'm going to just identify things that are going on. And either you're going to listen, or you're not going to listen, but have an opinion. I'm going to finish with this. Have an opinion one way or the other. Don't be wishy-washy. I have so many friends who are like, I don't know, whatever. If anybody, it's like, they're like, they do what anybody else taught them to do. I mean, they're like total sheep. It's like the government has won. It's like, I don't have an opinion. I'm scared you're not going to like me if I tell you my opinion, so I'm not going to tell you what. Well, well, you know what? I'm not scared to tell you my opinion even in, you know, people aren't going to like me. That's okay. I don't like everybody anyway, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. great thanks so much for doing this well thank you it's been fun it was it's awesome really and uh, i'm very excited about uh you and where you're headed and i can't wait to see uh when we get there what it's like it's gonna be exciting we're Absolutely. just not gonna stop that's for sure so thanks everybody for listening again if you like what you heard please subscribe and um just know this you're not alone Take care. Keep getting busy. Flipping.